Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in IBM in the UK. At the bottom, you can see my email address. Feel free to send me questions. One question you're not allowed to ask me is why is there four circles on the Power 10 logo? Because nobody knows. In this video, we'll be looking at the 10 facts for Power 10 and the Enterprise Server, the E1080, that came out in September 2021. Now, that really is a big number. Something's gone up, the plus sign for 57%. In fact, it's such a good number, I think we should have called the machine the E1057. So what does that number actually represent? It's the performance increase for the Power 10 processor and this particular machine as well. So well done to the development team for the processor and the server itself. So we are 57% faster than Power 9. Now that's a little bit inward facing it. For the Power guys, that's fine. We really need to concentrate on how much faster this is than the competition. Well, those numbers will appear soon. Also note that the individual cores in our processors are going faster, 30% faster, and the actual threads themselves are going 20% faster. So even our single threaded applications are going to get a performance boost. Now, some people, are not interested in performance. Uh, this is rather odd. I'm a benchmarking person by heritage, and you know I really like to brag about the faster we go. But some people see it a different way around. Rather than just the applications are going faster, so you can maintain more users, for example, on a particular machine, some people prefer to look at it as in, instead of uh, three racks of equipment, I only need two racks of equipment now with the Power 10, and that actually saves the data center footprint, and that saves the users a lot of money because they're paying by the square inch in the computer room. Other people are more focused on the, what seems to be very large numbers for some software when you're licensing it per core. And of course, if you need less cores, the price goes down. So we could actually get into a position where the new Power 10 computer is funded by your software license reduction. If we have faster CPUs, we want faster memory to keep the data being pushed in and saved off the processors once it's been manipulated. 80% faster performance in bandwidth terms. This is fantastic. We have invented this thing called OMI, Open Memory Interface, to give us this boost in performance. So that's the memory and CPU. Of course, those CPUs have to be connected together to make our bigger machines. The E1080 goes up to 16 processors if we have all four KECs in our configuration. So we have to connect them up so that the memory is available to all of the processors wherever the memory is actually attached. This is done via the SMP, Symmetric Multiprocessing Interchip Fabric. And this has got a 28% jump. Now that's a big number in its own right. Of course, it's not quite as big as the other two, but that's because the Power 9 processors had a very fast fabric already. So we're trying to tune up something that's already very fast. So let's move on to how are we actually doing these sort of big jumps. Well, on the CPU side, we've shrunk the CPU. Now, we've gone down to 7 nanometers. Uh, it's not obvious until you draw it as a picture. The Power 9 was 14 nanometers this is the size of the smallest thing we can actually put onto the chip you think of it as a track going between the transistors or the size of the transistor and there's other devices actually in the processor not just transistors but if you decrease this, the size in one dimension you're doing it in the other one so it's actually taking quarter of the real estate inside the processor and this allows us to actually go from 8 billion devices inside the processor to 18 billion for power 10 that's more than twice the number of components so rather than just cranking up the voltage in the good old days and making the gigahertz go up now we have to work harder in putting in lots of clever technology inside the processor with all these extra billions of devices to actually make it go faster so how are we getting that throughput performance for our memory? Well, we have underneath that uh, copper heatsink a new memory controller. This is buffered, so when the CPU wants to read, it's still reading at DDR4 speeds. It's actually transferred to the processor uh, much faster. And when the CPU is actually operating on that, it's actually in the cache, so then it becomes very fast. When it comes to writing the data from the CPU cache back into memory, this controller is buffered. So it sends it at high speed to the controller, it caches it, if you like, there, and then pushes it out onto the chips. When DDR5 comes out in the next year or two, 
And when it does, we'll refabricate these cards with DDR5 memory, and so the performance will go up yet again. But this card will then still be able to fit into our Power 10 servers, so we can upgrade to the latest memory without changing the rest of the computer. Also note that this controller is doing the main memory encryption for us. So we don't have to use the Power 10 encryption engines, and it's completely independent of the operating system. All they're going to do is read or write the memory, and this controller is going to encrypt and decrypt the memory for you. You may have seen this picture before of the actual Power 10 processor, and you'll see that there's 16 CPU cores on that. But we're only going to sell computers with 15 cores active. Why is that? Well, that gives us much higher yields of our chip. Turns out, a lot of our customers want the maximum number of cores, so that's a high demand configuration, but it's harder to make them with the top number of CPU cores. So by coming back down to 15, we have a lot more chips that we can put into our computers and sell you. This keeps the price down and we can hit the demand for the processors. Note this diagram in here is completely made up. There's no data behind this, it's just a show to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. It's all very well making a computer go faster, but does it cost equally as much more? The answer is no. So we've got lower prices in Euro dollar pounds. It's a new brand new currency is coming out. This is known as the bangs per buck number, how fast it is for how much does it cost the actual computer. So I've done some list prices uh, of just the hardware component. Doesn't include any software or hardware or software maintenance or the services that's usually all bundled in or any discounts so these are very rough numbers in here and so the e980 i gave it a rating of 100 and the e1080 it costs significantly less and that configuration will come in in about 32 percent faster if we look at the full configs with the maximum number of cores 16 terabytes of memory or all the memory and cpus have activated so they're in the price we've gone from 183 percent we can see another drop in price and that gives us the full and that gives us the full 57 percent faster so excellent bangs per buck next up is investment protection you may have bought power 8 and power 9 in the past and we want you to maximize your investment in those resources and we can do that in Power 10, we can still do the old-fashioned capacity upgrade and demand. So you buy a computer with activated CPUs and memory, but there'll be some dark CPU memory that's there, but not actually switched on and in use. You pay IBM money, we send you an activation code, you can switch those on and off you go. That's still all there, but the smart money is moved over to these things called uh, Power Enterprise Pools, where instead of buying a CPU on a particular machine, you buy a CPU in a pool. Of machines and you can decide where that CPU license is running at any one time you can move it around anytime you like this allows you to power off a machine and you reuse those CPU and memory licenses on another one in the pool during the lifetime of power 9 this became very popular as it's so flexible and it's now called IBM power systems private cloud with shared utility capacity it's probably best I don't comment on a name like that the good news is the Power 10 CPUs and memory can go into a Power 9 pool. So if you've paid for your Power 9 CPUs and memory, you can use those uh, CPU memory licenses to power up and use Power 10 CPUs and Power 10 memory. So this gives you a great deal of investment protection. And this part of this move from CapEx to OpEx, if you like, in your computer room, you're operating it like cloud does, where you just pay for their use and you can bring things up and down depending on the demand for resources. We also can do some migration deals for older hardware and things. Best ask, a bit complicated, but we can do that. Do talk to us. On top of are they faster and are they less expensive, there's also the green factor. Are they using less electricity? Are they using less resources to make, run, and eventually recycle after a busy life in the computer room? This is what I call the watts per bang number. Uh, I don't know if other people call it that. So low environmental impact. Well, we're waiting for the numbers to come out from the energy estimator that we have that tells you how much electricity it takes to actually run a computer. I've looked at the specs for the Power 9 and Power 10 uh, the large servers and the number of watts that they can actually take to the power supplies, the maximum they can actually take, is almost exactly the same. This time around for the Power 10 is 57% faster. So that will reduce 
the uh, watts per bang number by a similar sort of number. But I suspect when the actual official numbers come out that then will actually be quite a lot lower than that. So it's a good message on the, the watts per bang. I've also seen quite a few presentations looking at the sustainability of our computers and IBM is working very, very hard to, to lower the impact on the environment. In fact, the number I remember from one of them was that out, out of the computers that we make, only 1% of them actually go back to landfill. Everything else is, is recycled, but there's some components we just can't do that with. So we've got a pretty good story there. We're waiting for those energy estimator numbers that come out with the GA date, 17th of September. Now, I'm not going to recut the movie when we get those numbers, but I'll put it in the comments of the YouTube listing so that you can see what they turn out to be in the end. And number 10, advanced functions. Now, I couldn't decide which one of these should be number 10, so I put them all down in here. So yes, I'm cheating a bit here. This is the top 18 now. But very quickly, we have this thing called MMA. This is new instructions in the Power 10 calls, just like instructions like add one to register three or take a function call. These are built for AI workloads, and it means you can actually get the data from your database and do the AI workload on it directly without having to ship it to a GPU, for example. Already on the, my own Power 10 computer, we've been doing tests in there. They're getting quite good results. Typically, you'll change the library that your application calls, and unknown to the application, it will now be using MMA instructions to speed up. Of course, we have to get Power 10 computers to our ISVs for them to make the changes before we can actually quote lots of benchmark results. We have fewer parts in the computer, particularly, for example, that uh, SMP bus. There's no electronics down that, they're just cables now. Makes life simpler, it reduces the latency, but less parts means higher RAS. Higher security, Power SC. there's a new version come out with extra new features in. Looked at the uh, encryption of main memory, we have more encrypted engines in the Power 10 as well. And easy adoption, we have the same adapters, a remote eye drawers, Power 10, um, the IBMers and our customers are aware of those already, so there's nothing new to learn. Uh, there is some tiny, tiny little changes. There's a newer version of a particular adapter, so we're pushing those into Power 10. We've done the future proofing. We've we covered how the DDR5 memory can be adopted later, and we're already at PCI Gen 5, and when the adapters come out that require Gen 5, we can just push them into the machine. On the practicalities of the operating systems, AX73, Rail 8.4, and the latest IBM i versions support Power 10 mode and the extra features. The other current operating systems run in the Power 8 or Power 9 mode as they do now. AX6 requires Power 7 mode and that's not available on the Power 10. Also we need a HMC, there's a new HMC 10 code that's available on the CR1 and CR2. Uh, they are, can then support Power 8, 9 and 10. So if you have Power 7 machine, you can't run it on machine upgraded to the HMC upgraded to Power 10. We also have the uh, the virtual HMC is available too. And good news, N1 and NJ1 run fine on Power 10, AX and Linux. So let's summarize that. Uh, wow, <laughs> everything's good, isn't it? Performance up, technology's up, the prices are down and the housekeeping's green and flexible. Really good computer summary. Well, that's it for the video. Lots of excellent news on all fronts. If you like this video or learn something, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe and press the bell and you'll be informed when my next video comes out. Thanks for watching.